If I am avoiding the devil, my enemy, your enemy, our enemy, and we are avoiding all invites from the devil, that means my prayer is 100%. That is ihsan. That is perfection in prayer. And there will be many, many areas where the command of Allah comes, we may not commit to it, and that is the worship of the devil. Allah protect us from worshipping the devil at any level. That Keep in mind, I use the word prayer is a gauge. You're not going to attain excellence in the prayer. You need to attain excellence outside the prayer to enjoy excellence in the prayer. But our first goal should be when the thought comes, we do not entertain it. The dhakkaru, we remember where we are. Why is this thought coming? We come back to the highway of spirituality. And we see aright what is happening. نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد رب الشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي قال الله تعالى في الفرقان الحميد إنا نراك من المحسنين صدق الله العظيم اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وآله My beautiful family for the last few weeks, we have been discussing verse number 36 of Surah Yusuf. And to be completely truthful, not the entire verse, but the ending part of the verse, inna naraka min al where the inmates made a statement Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam, we have found you to be a very good person. We made mention that their observation was in the jail. They have never met Yusuf before this. So Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam upheld a standard of conduct that allowed these people to make this statement. From this we learn that wherever we may be in a good space or in a bad space, we need to uphold a good standard. People should not see what is going on inside. We need to bottle that. We need to conceal it. We can't change what is happening inside immediately, but we do have control over our body. So try to say that which does not represent what is going on inside. Try to be the best in front of people, even if the environment is not conducive to that, as Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam did. Then we started to discuss the word muhsinin, and we came to know that muhsin is from the word ihsan. And uh, ihsan means to discharge something with perfection. And we made mention that if we want to be known as muhsinun, we need to attain perfection in three departments. And that's what we are discussing. Ibadat, ita'at, and khidmat. The ibadat, the worship of Allah. Ita'at, the obedience to the Prophet of Allah and khidmat service to the creation of Allah Almighty. Last week, we made mention that ibadat of Allah Almighty needs to be established in the way Allah wants it to be established. So that's why when we study the Qur'an from cover to cover, wherever Allah Almighty makes mention of worshipping Him, we will find that he speaks about his creation. How he created this beautiful theater. That in itself holds a very important lesson pertaining to ibadat. That we need to attain the recognition of the one that we speak to. If a person does not recognize Allah, 
and he does not know who Allah is, then ibadat, then worship, salah will be devoid of spirituality. So recognition of Allah Almighty is very, very important. Now we're going to open up this topic. It's a very important topic. We have a larger crowd because of holidays. And we find many, many youngsters, mashallah, present today. And inshallah, you live a healthy life and a long life and a prosperous life, a productive life. You need to attain excellence in the worship. You need to attain excellence in worship. Now we're going to highlight one aspect today and most probably that will take all our time. I would like you to focus upon the word ghafla. So ghafla is an Arabic word. It's used in Urdu as well. And uh, the translation in English, uh, English is unaware, negligence. We even find that species in the animal kingdom are not ghafil of the environment. They're not ghafil of the environment. Once I went for hunting in Pakistan and I found that the rabbit, when it finds itself under attack, its ears, you can see them like antennas, their ears will stand up. And they're very, very vigilant. And they look around. They are not unaware of the environment. If they feel any threat, they will straight away look and start running. Now the enemy that we face is of two kinds. We'll speak about the enemy in a few moments, but the, the enemy that we face, we can't see. This is the problem. The rabbit can see the enemy. It can see the threat. And it can run from the threat. But the enemy that we have outside and inside, we can't see. There's an enemy that is outside and there's an enemy that is inside. And both enemies are not visible to us. We can't see the self and we can't see the Satan. The Satan can see us. So he has that edge over us. But we can't see him. Now, Allah Almighty says, now, if I was to ask you, if I was to say to you, do you think a human being, a Muslim, can worship the devil? What would you say? No. All right. So we believe, and alhamdulillah, we stick to this, that we can't worship the devil. Now, Allah Almighty is addressing human beings in the glorious Quran. When you go to Surah Yasin, we're talking about worship, excellence in worship now. When we go to Surah Yasin, Surah number 36, verse number 60, and you go back home, study verse number 60 and 61, Allah Almighty says, Alam ahad ilaykum ya bani adama alla ta'budu shaytan. It's an amazing verse. Innahu lakum aduwum mubin. Wa ani'buduni. Hada sirat mustaqim. Now we read this verse, those that read Surah Yasin daily, they read this verse daily. But they may not give it true time, contemplation. They don't allow this verse and what it contains to really hit home. Allah Almighty says, Alam ahad ilaykum. Have I not ordained for you? Have I not ordained for you, O children of Adam? La ta'budu shaitan, do not worship the devil. Do not worship the devil. Now Allah Almighty is addressing humanity. You can go to a non-believer and ask him, do you worship the devil? He will say, I'm not worshiping the devil. I don't even worship God. I don't believe in God. He will say, I don't worship God because I don't believe in God, let alone worship the devil. But Allah Almighty is saying, La ta'budu shaitan, do not worship the Satan. 
So who is Allah Almighty addressing? And then Allah Almighty says, إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌ مُبِينٌ That verily the devil is a clear enemy to you. He's your enemy. وَأَنِعْبُدُونِي Then Allah Almighty draws the attention of the children of Adam, you and me. وَأَنِعْبُدُونِي Worship me. Meaning that there's a group that is worshipping the devil. You need to pull away from that and worship me. هذا صراط مستقيم. This is the true path. Now, what does this verse mean? What does it mean that whenever a person is not doing that which Allah commands inside the prayer or outside the prayer, he is doing that which the devil, that is the outward enemy or the nafs, the inward enemy, is commanding? And what is worship? Worship is commitment to the Creator. It is glorifying the Creator. That's what worship is. In a few moments, inshallah, we are going to pray together. We call this ibadat. We call it salah. It is glorifying Allah Almighty. And a manifestation of that glorifying Allah Almighty is that we submit to Him. We bow in front of Him. By body language, we show that you are the one that is in control. Now, if a person steps away from that, and he does that which Allah does not command, then there is some command. Who is giving him that command? So if he's not accepting the command of Allah, accepting the command of Allah is worship. He's not accepting the command of Allah Almighty. Now you will understand where I'm coming from. He will be accepting somebody's command. And I've told you before, the command that is not in line with the command of Allah will come from two enemies. One is the inside, one is the outside. The inside enemy is the nafs. The outside enemy is the devil. So he has given the status that he should give to Allah, to the devil. And that's why Allah Almighty is saying, لا تعبدوا الشيطان. Do not worship the devil. In verse number 6 of surah number 35, Allah Almighty says, you know, um, before I, I, I recite the verse and translate it, as an example, when we are growing up, our parents, our uncles, aunties, they guide us. And Allah reward them that they guide us. And they say, son, daughter, isse baat nahi karni aapne. Yahan hi jana aapne. Don't speak to this guy. Don't go there. This person is not good. We hear this throughout our entire life. Don't go to that place. How many times we've heard this from mom and dad? Don't speak to this guy. Stay away from this girl. Stay away from this boy. How many times we've heard that? Now they're saying this because they want good for us. They don't want us to be trapped. They don't want us to fall into a pit. They're protecting us from grief and pain. We believe Allah loves us more than our parents. Where do we find that similar statement in the Quran? True. Where do we find that similar statement that parents make in the Quran? So I'm just going to give you one statement that is very similar to the statement that the parents make. And this is in surah number 35, verse number 6. It is the surah before surah Yasin. Allah Almighty says, Inna shaytan lakum aduwa. Inna shaytan lakum aduwa. I gave you the example of the parents in that frame. Try to understand this. Allah Almighty is saying that verily the devil for you is an enemy. Yedu shaytan na apka dushman hai this devil is your enemy. Now normally parents, what do they do? What do they say? They say that this person is not good, stay away from him. True? That's what parents say. They say stay away from this person. They don't say go and fight him. Parents will never say go and fight this guy. They say stay away from him. Allah says, Treat him as an enemy. 
One step further. Allah Almighty doesn't say step away from the devil. Treat him as an enemy. Because what does he do? What does he want this enemy? إِنَّمَا يَدْعُوا حِزْبَهُ لِيَكُونُوا مِنْ أَصْحَابِ السَّعِيرِ He invites his followers and Allah protect us from being his follower. He invites his followers, Hizba, لِيَكُونُوا مِنْ أَصْحَابِ السَّعِيرِ So they can be the dwellers of the blazing fire. We need to, by action, Take him in as, as an enemy. If I was to ask you, is shaitan your friend? You'll say, this is an insult, Imam. What are you saying? If I was to ask you, is shaitan your friend? They'll say, that's a silly question. Shaitan can never be our friend. But if I say to you that what you are doing is the command of the shaitan and you are following the command of the shaitan, you'll say, whoa. That's what Allah Almighty is saying. Anything that is not in line with what Allah wants, it comes from the devil or it comes from yourself. You need to step away from it. Take these two as an enemy. And an enemy can never be a well-wisher. The entire religion, a very comprehensive yet concise statement of the Prophet of Allah, religion is well-wishing. That's what the deen is. We are well-wishers. We want good for everyone or we should want good for everyone. The devil will never want good for you. So what will he take away from you? How would you know that he's got you? How would you know that you're worshipping him rather than Allah? Think about it. In a few moments you're going to pray. We have been praying all our life, alhamdulillah. A person leaves the shop. He leaves his business. He leaves his workplace. And he comes to the masjid. So he leaves the shop. He comes to the masjid and prays. And in the prayer, the shop is inside him. He hasn't left the shop. He's left the place. But what that place represents, he's brought it with him. <laughs> That's all of us. A majority of us. True. There are two words in Urdu, beautiful words. You can use them in Arabic as well. One is Haziri and one is Hazuri. What we do is Haziri, but there's no Hazuri. Haziri to hai namaz ki, lekin namaz ke andar Hazuri nahi hai. We are present in the prayer, but we are not present. Meaning, the body is present, that the soul is not present, the energy is not present, the heart is not present. Why? Because shaitan takes one thing away from us. He doesn't work on many, many things. He works on one thing. Remember this. And this is the gauge. This is the gauge. You know, when the, let's say, a few people come and they say, hands up, imam. Hand up. Anything that I have, I've lost it. I can't defend myself now. What is the hands up from the devil for human beings? So if I go like this, I'm helpless. I can't protect myself. Now it's up to that person, whatever he wants to do with me. Forgive me, shoot me, whack me, whatever. What is the hands up? The hands up, the word is ghafla. It's negligence. That's why we work upon this word. Negligence. When shaitan wants us to move away, he introduces the capsule of ghafla. And he gives us the capsule of ghafla. We become unaware. What is the antidote of ghafla? Come and tell me. What is the antidote of the capsule of ghafla? Dhikr. The remembrance of Allah. That's why Allah Almighty in Surah Taha, Surah number 20, verse number 14, what does Allah Almighty say? Innani an Allahu la ilaha illa ana fa'budni. And listen to the last part. Just a few moments ago, what is the antidote of the capsule of ghafla? Dhikr. Allah Almighty says, wa aqimi salata li dhikri. 
that verily I am the Lord, Allah is saying. None should be worshipped except I. Fa'budni, worship me. And one way of worshipping is وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَىٰ Establish the prayer, but for what? So you can have the antidote. So you can escape the harm of the capsule of ghafla. لِذِكْرِي For my remembrance. I can, I'm speaking to you right now. In a few moments, most probably after Jummah, I'll go for coffee. All right? You'll go home, you'll have lunch with your family, inshallah. If you have to go to work, you'll have lunch across the road. Yeah? We can eat, we can drink. I'm looking at you, I'm turning my head. In a few moments, Allahu Akbar. Everything stops. Everything stops. I can't speak with you. I can't look at you. You say, Assalamu alaikum, I can't say, Wa alaikum assalam. Outside prayer, if somebody says, Assalamu alaikum, and you don't respond, it is a sin. You are praying, and somebody says, Assalamu alaikum, you can't respond. Outside prayer, somebody sneezes, he says, Alhamdulillah, you say, Allah. In prayer, somebody sneezes, you, he can't say, Alhamdulillah. If you hear somebody sneezing, he can't say, Allah. Everything stops. True. Things that are permissible, stop. If somebody says, Imam Sahib, cheese, burger, this burger, two bro burger, can't take it, can't eat it. This is a practice. This worship is a practice for the general worship. Remember this. Salah is not the only worship. The objective of this Salah is that the life that you are living in this prayer is displayed outside the prayer. The attitude that you have inside the prayer is the attitude that you hold outside the prayer. But the beautiful thing is, it's very similar to fasting. Fasting is abstaining from things during daylight hours that were halal and haram. True. Certain things that were halal, you abstain from them. And haram, you have to abstain from them. Because you're abstaining from haram even before the fasting. Salah is exactly the same. There are certain things that were halal, abstain from them. Certain things that were haram, you abstain from them before salah, you abstain from them in salah. What does that mean? It gives us the understanding that I, we, us have the ability to abstain from many more things including what is haram. Some people say, I can't keep away from haram. You say, how, how is that possible? You kept away from halal. That is addition to haram. So this is a practice. This is a practice. This salah is a practice. We abstain from things that Allah disallows. We abstain from things that Allah disallows outside. That's why if you go to Surah Ankabut, Surah number 29. And the first verse of the 21st Jews, verse number 45. What does Allah Almighty say? Inna salata tanha anil fahshai wal munkar. That verily the prayer prevents you from fahsha, great sins of all kinds. Wal munkar and disbelief and wicked deeds. I ask you, does it really prevent us? Allah has made a statement. The statement of Allah Almighty is mi'a fil mi'a. It's 100%. There's no doubt about the statement of Allah Almighty. True. If Allah Almighty is saying that the prayer prevents from evil, from fahsha and munkar, I need to, we need to look at our life outside the prayer. Is it preventing us from evil? If it is not preventing us from evil, let's say it's preventing us 50%. That means we've got ihsan, Excellence in prayer of 50%. This is the gauge. If I am avoiding the devil, my enemy, your enemy, our enemy, and we are avoiding all invites from the devil, that means my prayer is 100%. That is ihsan. That is perfection in prayer. Inna naraka min al muhsinin. So salah, remember, is the gauge for the general meaning of worship that extends beyond your prayer, it covers your entire life. Because there are many, many 
areas in life where the command of Allah Almighty will come and we will commit to it. That's worship. And there will be many, many areas where the command of Allah comes. We may not commit to it and that is the worship of the devil. Allah protect us from worshipping the devil at any level. Allah Almighty allow us to be committed to the worship of Allah Almighty in totality. Last part, because we've got a few minutes, inshallah. When you go back home, I would like you to study one verse. Now you will say, we can't see the devil. He has an edge over us. That's a disadvantage to us. All right? Now keep in mind, a lot of brothers, a lot of sisters, say, Imam Saab, namaz parte, we pray and the thoughts start coming. Can, we, can I get a nod on that? Yeah. So the thoughts start coming. That keep in mind, I use the word prayer is a gauge. You're not going to attain excellence in the prayer. You need to attain excellence outside the prayer to enjoy excellence in the prayer. I've said these words very carefully. You can't attain and start the journey of excellence inside the prayer. It's not going to work. You need to attain excellence outside. And as a reward, you will receive excellence, khushu and khudu, inside the prayer. It can't happen, you know, that outside the prayer, I'm looking at everything. I'm thinking about everything. I'm saying everything that I want to say, good or bad. And then Allahu Akbar, and I'm a wali. And no other thought comes in my mind. No, no, it's not going to work like that. So if people are saying we're not attaining khushu and khudu in prayer, they need to look at their life outside the prayer. So what is the verse? Verse 201. 201. From Surat A'raf, Surat number 7. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ إِذَا مَسَّهُمْ طَائِفٌ مِّنَ الشَّيْطَانِ now before we translate it, let me make it very clear. You may be given 100% outside the prayer and you have attained a level of excellence outside the prayer. It doesn't mean that you say, Allahu Akbar, no thought will come. But what is the difference then? The difference is, Allah Almighty says, Verily those people that are trying, that are pious and righteous, and you are all pious and righteous and you're trying. One commentary of this, one tafsir of this, Imam Qurtabi makes mention that when the evil thought comes, and an evil thought can be a thought that comes when it should not come as well. The nature of the thought may not be evil, but the time when the thought comes is evil. Try to keep that in mind. So there may be a noble thought that comes in your mind in the prayer. It's not the right time for the thought to come. So the nature of the thought is good, but the timing is not right. And sometimes the thought is bad. So Allah Almighty says, Masahum ta'ifum min shaitan. That the devil plants a thought. And this happens to all of us. He's trying to, trying to pray, you're trying to commit. You want to think about the greatness, the glory, the, 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 the raf'at of Allah Almighty, and suddenly a thought comes. Oh, my child is sick. Now, by nature, that thought is not bad. I didn't lock my shop. By nature, that thought is not bad. It's not evil. But it's the wrong time. But he's using this now. But what does Allah Almighty say? Because of an effort outside the prayer, Allah comes to the rescue. Tadhakkaru. Allah will remind you. Straight away, it will be easy for you to pull away from that thought that should not come. And you will come back on the highway of spirituality. مُبْصِرُونَ And then you will see right. Oh, that was not right. You come back. Our prayer, perfection in our prayer, most probably in our entire life, will not be that we say, Allahu Akbar. And till assalamu alaikum, we have no thought. That's most probably not going to happen in our life. 
Let's be practical. Because of what we have seen, what we do, the environment in which we are. So if we, this is the best. You say, Allahu Akbar. And Assalamu Alaikum. Four or five minutes, no thought. The only thought of Allah Almighty. The soul, the heart, the mind is all connected to Allah. It never broke. The connection was so strong. The Telstra connection. <laughs> Telstra connection. Never broke. Possibly that's not going to happen. If it happens, Alhamdulillah. But our first goal should be, when the thought comes, we do not entertain it. The dhakkaru, we remember where we are. Why is this thought coming? We come back to the highway of spirituality. mubsirun, And we see aright what is happening. Inshallah, if we can attain that, we will attain a level of ihsan. And this is ihsan, excellence in the department of ibadat. Aqulu qawli hadha, astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Wa lisa'ir al-muslimin, fa astaghfiru innahu wal-ghafoor rahim